Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I welcome all of us to seminar four. Call to be a disciple of Jesus. Let us invite our Mother Mary, our ever present help and intercessor, to today's seminar, asking her to intercede, continue to offer our prayers to her son as we start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, feed the hearts of the faithful, and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. Thou, O Lord, will open our lips, and our mouth shall announce your praise. Incline unto our aids, O Lord. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be war without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, our good Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of your mercy. Jesus, have mercy on us. Mother Mary, help us. May the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May they rest in perfect peace. Amen. Today is Sunday. We say the glorious mystery. The first glorious mystery is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead to give us life and life everlasting. The second is his ascension into heaven. He made to make a place for you and I, to prepare a place for us, a comfortable and everlasting place for each and every one of us. The third 
is the descent of the Holy Spirit on the apostles, on the Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was released and the Holy Spirit is still working in the world today. Let us at this third mystery, ask the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to hear, to give us the wisdom, to make our hearts fertile grounds for today's teaching, that he himself will teach us, that we'll only hear the voice of the speaker, but the conviction will be from the Holy Spirit. The fourth is the assumption of our Blessed Mother Mary into heaven. The fifth is her coronation as the queen of heaven and earth. Let us in a special way ask the Lord to be with us, ask the Holy Spirit to come and teach you, ask the Spirit of God to dwell in you, direct your mind, ask the power of the Holy Spirit to remove every distraction, whatever shall constitute a distraction to you, as we go through today's seminar, ask the Lord to take it away from you. Ask for his blessing upon you that today you will take out something that will lead you in the right way. Commit yourself to God that you will for today be a particular special disciple for him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, our good Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of your mercy. Jesus, have mercy on us. Mother Mary, help us. May the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May they rest in perfect peace. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. 
Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show to us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O holy mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation, grant, we beseech you, that meditating upon these mysteries in the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May your divine assistance always remain with us. And may the source of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. John the Evangelist, pray for us. St. Louis Mary de Montfort, pray for us. All the angels and saints, all the saints who we remember today and we celebrate today, 1st November, in the whole Catholic Christendom, pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Sister Clarice, let's have praise and worship. Let's praise the Lord for some minutes. <laughs>
Whilst we are waiting for our sister Emily to join back, just close your eyes and begin to worship the Lord. Call him the names that you call him by. Thank him for who he is. He is the glorious God. He is the mighty God. He is the beginning and the end. He is the El Shaddai. Thank him because he's a great God. Thank him for making it possible for us to be here for this seminar for. Thank him for the reconciliation that he gave us at the penitential service. Thank him for the salvation that he has granted to us, for making us worthy to be counted among the children of the most high God, for welcoming us into the family of the saints. Glorify his holy name. As we thank him, let us begin to hand over today's speaker into his hands. That the Lord will use her in a mighty way to speak to his children. Let us ask that our hearts become fertile soil to receive the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than two edged swords. Let us pray that the word of God that we hear this afternoon may pierce our hearts and bring about a divine transformation. Let us welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst, our helper, our advocate, the one who knows the minds of the Father, to open our ears and our hearts and minister unto us in a special way. Let us pray for one more touch of the Holy Ghost as we come into his presence this afternoon. Righteous Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the many blessings that you have granted unto us. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for counting us worthy to be here in your presence. As we sit at your feet, Daddy, to hear from you again, we ask that you remove from us everything that is not from you, that you open our hearts to receive your word. 
We ask that you move today in a mighty way. We commit the speaker into your holy hands. We commit the network into your holy hands that your name and your name alone will be glorified all the days of our life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We will just hand over now to um, the speaker for today for seminar four, Sister Ifani Olagbaju, to please take over. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is indeed a very great day to be called to be a disciple. November 1, All Saints Day. You know, I couldn't but bless God for today. And I did so because I said, Father, you always go before us. You always go before us and plan our lives. Here we were thinking that we're attending a seminar, but he scheduled it such that the day we are called, no turning back, is All Saints Day. He placed us here today under the canopy of heaven. The angels, the saints, the hosts of heaven, they are all praying for us today. They are all rooting for us today. They are all celebrating with us today because today is a day that we have been called to be disciples. And God knows, the angels and saints know, that deep in our hearts, each of us have said yes to him. To him alone be all the glory, honor, adoration, and praise, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now, our anchor passage is taken from Luke 9, verse 61 to 62, and I read, Another also said, I will follow you, Lord, as your disciple. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to those at my home. But Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back to things left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. This week, Jesus calls us to be his disciples. He invites us to give our hearts and our lives to him. And he expects an answer, no turning back. Now, after seminar three, I said to myself, the message was so clear that everybody who shows up today for seven, seminar four has taken a decision already to be disciples of Jesus Christ. So I'll be discussing the rules of engagement of this life that we're all embarking on today. Now to understand the rules, there are two constants. The first is God is love. The second is the devil is a liar and there's a continuous battle. Now, this call has three levels. The first level is that we are called to believe. In John chapter 1, verse 12, the Lord calls us to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. He says to as many as believed, he gave power to become sons of God. So if we believe, he has given us power to become his children even to them to be, who believe on his name. This begets the question, do you believe? You know, I used to think that wasn't necessary, but in 20, um, about four years ago, 2011, when I went through the Life in the Spirit seminar, I was introduced to so many things and I asked myself this question, if I, have you really believed all this while? Because belief is an action word. Proof that we believe in something is that we act on that belief. The second call is that we are called to be holy. We are called to be like Jesus. Now, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 says, It is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Holy means consecrated. It means dedicated to God. It means set apart. Are we consecrated? 
um, consecration means that we have put ourselves, we've presented ourselves for the special use of the Father in our offices, in our homes, or in public, wherever we go. We should be useful vessels in the Lord's hands. Now, recently I attended a seminar. It was actually um, the Board of Lectures seminar. And I learned that we are called to be lights in the world. We are called to be monstrances. And when I heard that I said monstrances, when we sit before the blessed sacrament, how do we feel? I feel loved. I feel comforted. I know that I'm sitting before the Lord and I'm assured of a listening ear. I'm assured of good counsel. Now we are called to be Jesus Christ in the world. We are called to be monstrances. So how do people feel when they're with us? Do they feel loved? Do they feel like they're receiving good counsel? Are they assured of a listening ear? You know, when you see a Christian, when you see somebody who's living a life in the spirit, you look at them like monstrances. You don't really have to have that person open their mouth for you to know that they're a Christian. You can just tell by watching them, there is something about that person. We are to be like that. Now in Matthew um, 5, verse 16, the Lord says that our lights must shine so bright that people will look at us and bless God. I was drawn to this life in the spirit by watching people. I couldn't understand how people just focused on the mass without distractions. Those people were monstrances to me and they called me into this life. So are you a monstrance? The third level is that we are called to be sent. In Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So we have to go baptize, but we also have to teach. Now this used to scare me, teach. The devil, the accuser, the liar, he would try to defeat many of us by making us fall under the saying that you cannot give what you don't have. I used to be so reluctant to serve because I knew that I didn't know much in the Bible. I didn't know enough scripture and I lacked thorough understanding. But God in his mercy was able to show me that all you need is a little, a little willingness to work, a little faith, a little willingness to volunteer. That's all we need. Now in Matthew 9 verse 21, the lady who suffered from the issue of blood said to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will get well. This passage really, really encourages me because I imagine what happened that day. You know, some people, we have different characters. Some people are outgoing. They can just rush through the crowd and hold on to Jesus and hug him. Some people can just walk close to him, arm in arm with him. But I'm a bit reserved. I'm shy. So I'm more like that woman who would just say, mm, let me just touch the hem of his garment. And, you know, she did that. And Jesus saw her and said, courage, my child. Your faith has made you well. So the woman like me, she had little faith and this prompted her to act. Now, in this call to be disciples, there are six points that we have to pay attention to. And I will just take them one by one. The first is discipleship means following Jesus. In order to truly follow Jesus, we must recognize him and accept him as our Lord and master. Praise God. We Alleluia. must let Jesus Alleluia. take the lead. Amen. I need that to know because it's kind of weird. <laughs> we must yeah. let Jesus take the lead and do all that he tells us to do. His instructions for us are in the Bible John 1 verse 1 tells us that the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. We must get to know him. 
love him and be comfortable in his presence. You know, Jesus Christ should be our companion, our friend. So, you know, when you're sitting down for quiet time, you should just relax and be like, ah, you know, to get to know him, we must spend time studying him in his word. The word of God is alive and it is active. It should be a lamp for our feet and a light to guide us. Now in Ezra chapter seven, verse 10, we read that Ezra was devoted to the Lord. Ezra chapter seven, verse 10. Ezra was devoted to the Lord. He spent his time studying the law, practicing it and teaching it. Now this is what disciples do. We follow the master and teach others to do the same. If we do not practice what we learn, we cannot teach others. This is an experiential thing. You have to use what you get in scripture. And then, you know, from your own life's experiences, you're able to share with others. Now, as a student, you write common entrance, pass, and then you move on to secondary school, then university, and then work. You gain work experience. Work experience means that you have gained some useful tools and you can train people in the industry. You become useful. As an apprentice, it's the same thing. You work under your master. Your master trains you, and then you get your freedom. You get your own apprentice, and you train that person. And then football. I always add a football story because I have three sons, and I tell you my life is filled with football. So as a footballer, you go to football academy, then junior league, and then the premier league. And if you're good, you begin to coach teams. Now, if you're a foot, football fan like me, you will see that the coaches are people like Henri, Olegana Shawsire, Ateta, people who just finished playing. Now they are coaching because they've learned and they are teaching others to do the same. In each instance, you practice what you learn in order to progress and train. So it is with the life in the spirit. You must study the word in the Bible and then you must practice it. Now, 2 Peter 1, verse 5 to 8, encourages us to do our best to add goodness to our faith. So that your little faith, you put goodness on top of it. And then you add knowledge, knowledge gained from your quiet time. You know, when you spend time with God, he teaches you. And then with that knowledge, you're able to add self-control. You're able to obey the laws that you read. And then also your self-control, you add endurance to God. Our Lord gives you the grace to persevere. And then to your endurance, you add godliness. And to our godliness, we add brotherly affection. And to our brotherly affection, we add love. These are the qualities we need. And if we have them in abundance, then we can be active and effective. So you see there's a process, it grows, it builds. We can be effective in our knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we can teach others to do the same. In the Bible, we are given keys for successful living. If we do not practice using the keys, the doors will not open. The doors of favor will not open. Discipleship means following Jesus, still on the same point. In good times and in bad times, follow Jesus. <laughs> I used to be like Peter in Matthew 16, verse 21 to 22. You know, Jesus said to the disciples, I must go to Jerusalem and I will be put to death. But three days later, I will be raised to life. And Peter said, God forbid, Lord, this must never happen. But Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan, because these thoughts of yours don't come from God, but from man. Many of us are like me. We're like Peter. We reject bad news. Oh, I'm a Christian, so things should go well. Not always. You know, there will be bumps and bruises, but God is faithful. Well, we need not fear because, you know, one of the constants I said is God is love. God is love. Oftentimes in this life of the spirit, we are plagued by countless fears like Peter, fear of death, fear of failure, fear of disgrace. These thoughts are from the devil. As disciples of Christ, we must listen to his words and silence the voice of the devil. God is love. In his love, he tells us the truth. There might be pain, but joy comes in the morning. Believe it. In Psalms 23, he says, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil. 
because God is with you. I believe this. We should all believe this. Because in Psalm 145, verse 13, God, we are told that God is faithful and his promises are sure. In Isaiah 61, verse 3, I love this scripture because it displays a balance of life. He promised promises to those who mourn joy and gladness instead of grief, a song of praise instead of sorrow. Another version says a crown of beauty instead of ashes and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So when you have that heaviness, when you have that despair, go to God in your quiet, quiet time. Disciples believe in the word of God. You cannot follow Jesus if you don't believe in his word and believe in his promises. And you cannot say you believe if you do not act on his word. You know, in our community recently, we acted on our faith in God. After Black Tuesday, hey, I was gutted. Many people were upset. But you know, the Lord laid it in the hearts of our leaders in the church to organize praise in unusual times. You know, he gave us roses for ashes. We sang and we gained strong, um, strength from that. To him be the glory. In Matthew 16, verse 24, Jesus says, if anyone wants to come with me, that is, if anyone wants to be my disciple, he must forget self. He must carry his cross and follow me. You know, too often, I will share my testimony later on, too often we are the ones who get in the way of our life in the spirit. We take up our crosses when we live a life of obedience to God. Obedience is key. If a student does not obey the rules in school, he will fail his exams. In football, I've come again. Remember Mario Barutelli? He didn't like obeying rules, always throwing tantrums, always reckless, and he used to annoy me. And my sons were like, Mom, he's disobedient. He cannot last in the Premier League. And you know what? That is football. How much more a life in the spirit? We must be obedient. We must be like Jesus. Jesus Christ teaches us to be obedient. In Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11, we are told that the attitude we should have is the one that Jesus Christ had. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to become equal to God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like man and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. For this reason, this decision to be humble and obedient, God raised him to the highest place above and gave him a name that is greater than any other name. And so in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will fall on their knees, and all will proclaim openly that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Discipleship means following Jesus. When we follow Jesus, we should keep our eyes on him and not on the storm called life. Now I'm middle-aged. If you've lived long enough, you will know that there's always gonna be a challenge. You're trying to get, uh, have a baby, the baby comes, send that child to school. Next thing, will I, can I, can I um, educate this child? There's always a storm. In Matthew 14, verse 22 to 32, the boat the disciples were in was being tossed by the wind. Between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., Jesus came to them walking on water. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me come. And the Lord said, come. You know, he's telling us today, in spite of where we are in our positions, our lives, he's telling us, come, get out of that boat, walk on water. And Peter started walking towards the Lord. He answered the call. He started walking and then when he noticed the storm, 
he began to panic and shouted, save me, Lord. And that can happen to us, but it is dangerous. You know, when we panic, we can kill ourselves. Jesus said to Peter, how little faith you have. Why did you doubt? We should never doubt God. His promises are sure. The key is the word of God and our believing and trusting his word. For he and his word are one. Discipleship means following Jesus. Your quiet time is something you must do every day as long as you have breath in your lungs. It is an understanding. He is the vine, and as his disciples, we are the branches. Cut off from him, we can do nothing. The second is, discipleship means making a decision to turn away from wrongdoing. Now, in seminar three, we were given the whole nine yards of that. But I will refer to Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 37 to 38. And it states that after his powerful sermon on Pentecost Day, Peter was asked, what shall we do? And he replied, each of you must turn away from your sins. We must do the same. We need to examine our lives critically, ask the Holy Spirit to just reveal to us those areas where we have to turn away from, and then we need to make the necessary changes. Some of these changes can be drastic. But I assure you, brethren, if the change in your heart, if this decision to walk the life in the, um, the decision to be a disciple, if the changes you make in your heart are not visible to people around you, in your home, in your offices, then there's a problem because you really have not changed. We should try not to rationalize. We cannot balance two lives. You know, I try to do it. I'm a very um, process-oriented person. So I thought to myself, you know, my testimony is coming. I didn't trust charismatic, so I didn't. And so I said to myself, you know what? I need the Holy Spirit. I need more in my life. So I will keep my life here. Then I'll go to the Life in the Spirit seminar. I will master the Holy Spirit, and then I'll continue life. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Matthew 6 verse 24 says that we cannot serve two masters. We will either hate one and love the other. Today, we must decide to turn away from sin, from wrongdoing. We should pray, Lord, take my heart and let it be consecrated to you. It starts in the heart. Let's ask God to help us guard our hearts diligently. It should be a daily prayer. Because, you know, long before we do anything wrong, long before we sin, it has already festered and taken root in our heart. You know, the word of God tells us in Mark 14, verse 10 to 11, that Judas had decided to betray Jesus. And then he waited for the opportunity. And when it came, he took it. The scribes and Pharisees, they tried to trick Jesus. They couldn't stand him. They tried to trick him. And when they couldn't, they decided to kill him. And then they waited for the opportunity and they took it. Um, in Matthew 14, verse 3 to 5, Herod also, the things that John the Baptist was saying pricked him and he decided he would kill him. And when the opportunity came, you know, he kind of pretended, ah, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do it. But he did it because it was already there in his heart. You know, like John the Baptist, some people are speaking to us. You know, Monsignor will talk and talk. You know, people will talk to you and you get irritated. I've come to learn that when I'm irritated, it means pay attention because something needs to be done in your heart. So we must guard our hearts. You know, when you say to yourself, to your child or to a co-worker, even if you don't voice it, I will get you. Chances are you will. You will act on that thing. So we've got to kill the thought in our hearts before it consumes us. Discipleship means making a decision to turn away from sin, from wrongdoing. We have to decide to be good and then ask the Holy Spirit because we cannot do it on our own. We can't. We will always rationalize. And the devil, that liar, that accuser is there feeding us with things. You know, he can tell you if you're a young girl, and ah, look at that boy, you know, or if you're a young boy, look at that girl. Because you've decided, you can say, no, I will not look. My body is a temple of God. I don't want to do any, any wrong. 
Or he might look at a, a woman who has a good body, a young girl, a middle-aged woman who has a good body, and he'll say, wear that dress. You can get away with it. You know now, slay mama, do it. You know, you should respond. I'm not a slay mama. I'm not. I'm a Christian. And my body is the temple of God. We have a dress code. When people look at us, they must see that we are disciples of Christ. We are monstrances in the world. Now, Ephesians 4, verse 17 to 34, guides us on how to live. It is good to read all the verses, but I would stress verse 22 and 23 of Ephesians 4. And it says, get rid of your old self that is being destroyed by its deceitful desires. And verse 23 your hearts and minds must be made completely new, completely new. And so I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, our hearts and our minds are renewed today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we said discipleship is following Jesus. Discipleship is turning away from sin, from wrongdoing. The third is Discipleship is staying in daily touch with Jesus. Now, you cannot be a good student of a professor if you don't attend his lectures. And we cannot know Jesus if we do not spend time with him. In everything, there is a process. Every student who desires success must work hard to pass exams. They must train themselves to do better. It is not easy, but it is possible. To climb the corporate ladder, to succeed, especially in an economy like ours in Nigeria, is not easy, but it is possible. Same with the life in the spirit journey. It is not easy. It takes discipline, but it is possible. We can do this, and we have the Holy Spirit helping us. We must spend time studying the word and praying to God. You know, studying the word, I like Psalm 91. We all like Psalm 91, but look at how it starts. It says, he who dwells, you just relax in the secret place of the most high and abides under the shadow of the almighty. When you dwell and abide, you're not in a hurry. You're not in a hurry to go anywhere. And it's he who does that, that can say with confidence, that you, God, are my defender and my protector. You are my God in whom I trust. When we let go and we let God, we gain peace. But when we try to figure things out ourselves, you know, we say, oh, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. Well, let me just figure this out. When we try to figure things out ourselves, our imagination runs wild. You know, you might be praying and the Holy Spirit is telling you, do this, do this. And you've, you've engaged it. If I do this, ha. Huh? I don't think it will work. Oh, no, no, no. You will look at all the parameters. No, no, no. Let me do it my way. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be tempted to do things our way. If we let God take over, as in take over everything in our lives, so things will turn out in a way you've never imagined. You know, he's God. He knows everything. He sees the end from the beginning. So you can never imagine what plans that he has for you. Okay. And he has promised us that peace that passeth all understanding. So let us dedicate time to sit with the Lord. Otherwise, you will live a life of fear. You will panic. You will take rash decisions. You know, let's wait on the Lord for a husband. Halfway through, you start panicking. Ah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Then you marry the wrong man. Let's wait on the Lord. This business investment isn't good. Just wait. Be patient. Ah, I can't wait. I can't wait. And then you make a bad investment. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Amen. Jesus often went to a lonely place to commune with the Father very early in the morning. Mark 1 verse 35 tells us this. And then in Luke 5 verse 16, the Bible tells us that he will go to a lonely place to pray. No distractions. I have three sons and each of them thinks that they are my favorite. They all think that, ah, you know, mommy has a special relationship with me. And this is because when I want to learn about their struggles or, you know, their joys or who they are dating, whatever it is, I set up meetings. If I have money, I take them out to a restaurant. If I don't have money, then we meet in my bedroom. And it's a prearranged meeting. 
everybody in the house knows that mom is meeting with Olafari or Mobolaji or Olusheo. Now, if we happen to be at home and one of the brothers strays in, both my sons and I were like irritated. We're like, no way. You knew about this meeting. Don't interrupt. We're getting to know each other. Hmm? We do not want anyone to disturb us. And so the same should be with our relationship with Jesus Christ. At home right now, everyone should know that you're doing the Life in the Spirit seminar. Everyone should know that you're doing your quiet time, that it's a prearranged time, and you don't want any distractions. By now, you should have communicated to them lovingly how important the quiet time is. Jesus Christ is also in church. So if you want to spend time with Jesus, attend Mass. Masses are going on now in person. We can't go there. Make time to go for mass. Prepare adequately for mass. Sometimes I, I just, if I wake up early, I will sit down, I will go through the readings. I'll try to imagine the readings. And then sometimes I even prepare my own homily. And I got that. It's not my own. It's something that Monsignor taught mass servers. But I took it because I thought that was a really good thing. And in preparing my homily, it was very nice for me to see that some of the things that I had in my own personal homily, I would hear the priest say at mass. It gave me confidence because, you know, sometimes you're not sure. Am I hearing from God? Is this really God? Is this my imagination? When you prepare your homily, those inspirations, I mean, it cannot be your imagination if you go for mass and the priest who is not in your head is saying the same thing. Do you understand? It's the Holy Spirit. So it just helps you um, gain confidence and discern the voice of God. Okay. So this is my confession. I was not always like this, obviously. Um... In, I think, over four years ago, my anniversary is November 21, 2015. I did the Life in the Spirit seminar. But before that, I have a confession to make. I didn't like Monsignor. I did not like Monsignor at all. I didn't. I felt that he talked too much, oh, document, document, Evangelic Guardian, Lumen Gentium. You know, it was just too much for me. I was like, just end the mass, let me go home. I just came, I have the stipulated time to be here, and then I need to leave. Now, that was my ignorance. That was ignorance. That was pride. That was so many things working in me. I didn't know half of what he was talking about, and I didn't want to know. I felt that if I hadn't heard about it, all these documents and all these things, then it cannot be um, important for my salvation. That was my own lack of experience. However, the Holy Spirit who goes before us, our God who goes before us, he didn't leave me there. To, to suffer in ignorance. He said, how, how about you write these things down? Instead of getting angry with the priest, write down what he's saying. I'm going to see if you can find something out. And I did. I wrote it down. And brothers and sisters, I learned so much from reading the documents. Still, oh, I was complaining. Kerygma, Alpha, Life in the Spirit. All I knew was I didn't want to listen to all these things. I didn't want to attend. But the Lord had already started working in me. I couldn't leave. I signed up for Alpha reluctantly. And every Alpha seminar, I said to myself, this is the last one. Let me just sit and see what they are saying. And that's how I finished Alpha. I was reluctant until I finished. At my first Life in the Spirit seminar, I looked at the charismatic renewal with great suspicion. I felt that these people are noisy and they are too happy. I mean, who's this happy? It can't, it can't be real. It had to be fake. As the seminar progressed, I noticed that I couldn't stop praying. Things that concerned me, things that didn't concern me, world, peace. If I see a woman passing, I'll be like, oh Lord, heal her because she's limping. I got upset. I would go before the blessed sacrament with my own litany of, of petitions. And then my mind would be strained. I'll pray for this person, pray for that person. I was like, no, 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 no. I said, these charismatics, they've done something to me. I suspected them. So I said, I'll report to Monsignor. So now you see my vendetta had shifted from Monsignor to the charismatic renewal. The devil, the liar, he will always give you something to complain about. He constant, he will always give you something to complain about. So that day, the Monsignor was the one who celebrated Mass, and the Gospel was taken from Matthew 11, verse 21 to 24. And I read 21. It reads, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles that were performed in you were performed in Tyre or Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Then Monsignor said in his homily, This scripture is true today in divine mercy. We brought Alpha. 
we brought Kerygma twice. We've been doing Life in the Spirit seminar. Very few people attend these programs. And half of those who attend are complaining and talking and asking questions. And then he paused for a bit and he goes, you know, it amazes me. Those of you who use your intellect, eh? those of you who use your intellect, I wonder, where do you think your brain came from? You question the God who made you, who put that brain in your head. I cried. <laughs> I cried because that message was for me. I had been prickly. It's this, up and down, it's too much, it's too this, it's too that. I had been so prickly. That message was for me. Instead of approaching with humility and an open mind to learn, I had come with my intellect. Something changed that day. Today, to the glory of God, charismatic, don't kick me out. Oh. Today, <laughs> I'm a member of the renewal and you should see me. I'm always clapping. I'm a member of the renewal. I cannot believe the transformation in my life. And as for Monsignor, anyone who knows me knows that I love Monsignor dearly. So let nothing disturb uh, us on this journey. No ignorance, no pride, no procrastination, no rationalization, no fear no confusion, let nothing cause us to walk away. Our hands are on the plow, no turning back. Discipleship means being in daily touch with Jesus. It is a lifestyle. Now, when you read the Bible, don't look at it like you're reading a book. You've got to study it. Read different versions. King James, I like the Amplified, the Good News, if you're looking for direction, start with the Psalms, go to the Gospels, you know, pray before reading, desire to hear something new, look up the meanings of words, and also have a study body. You know, I, we have prayer groups and everything, have a study body, somebody who you can talk to and share insights with. The word of God is new every morning, so let's never assume that we know scripture and understand the content, no. The same scripture passage can have a different meaning for different people. And for you, it might be the same scripture passage that is your own. Every time you're in a situation, God will speak to you in different ways from that same passage. Such is the wonder of God. So discipleship means following Jesus. And then discipleship means turning away from wrongdoing. Discipleship means remaining in daily touch with Jesus. Now we have discipleship means having a vision. Jesus had a purpose in his life on earth. He came from heaven to earth to show us the way. From the earth to the cross, our deaths he paid, a sacrifice born out of love. He expects us also to live a purpose-driven life. And our purpose must be driven by love because God is love. We each need to prayerfully examine us, our lives. We need to ask God what we can do for him. Can we do more for our family? Can we do more for the church, our neighbors, the larger community? You know, the larger community especially, because this pandemic has shown me, and I'm sure many of us, how transient life is. You know, how useless all the things we gather are. There's so many things, what are we doing with these things? As disciples, we must reflect on what lasting effect our lives and our decisions have on our children and our neighbors and on ourselves. St. Paul says in Philippians 1 verse 21, for what is life? To me, it is Christ. To all of us who are called to be disciples, to us, our life is Christ, nothing else. We should strive to be holy, and we should try to make heaven. I'm smiling because, ah, I, but for God, I don't know where I would be. The first time I heard about be holy, live a saintly life was from my spiritual director. He says he aspired to sainthood. And I said, who does that? How can you aspire for the impossible? I mean, in our generation, who can be a saint? But it is possible. And we have learned that there is a process there's no point in being a disciple for Christ if you're not aspiring to sainthood. We move, if we follow the process, we move further and further away from sin and closer and closer to the light. And then eventually we become the person that God has created us to be. 
and God's grace will propel us. So we have to be strategic in our life in the spirit. Discipleship means living with other disciples. Iron sharpens iron. We need the help of other Christians in order to stand. Many of the people you hang out with, they will not understand some of the decisions that you take. They won't understand that you don't want to go out anymore. I used to dance. I used to love to dance. Now I can't. You know, I don't even know how to anymore. I prayed about it. I said, Lord, take out that dancing spirit. You know, dancing is a spirit. I said, take out that dancing spirit from me. I want my dance to glorify you. And people didn't understand it. No more late nights. No more womanizing. No more shopping sprees or careless spending. No more immodest dressing. No more enjoying dirty jokes or hot gossip. No more opening your drink and then giving it to your ancestors on the ground to drink before you can take your own. No, <laughs> your life has changed. Some people will try to coerce you to return to your old ways. And if that doesn't work, they will shun you or they will even spread malicious gossip about you. When I decided to stop drinking and I altered my wardrobe, it was like I had committed a crime. You know, you think it's nobody's business until it becomes everybody's business. You will hear things like, are you the only Christian? Why the extremes? Relax now. Uh -uh. Oh, uh -uh. people have gone before you now. That's not how they do it. And then for those who have maybe lived a crazy life, they'll be like, look at you. They followed everybody in town. Now they want to go and follow Jesus. Ah, go, Joe. Do not be distracted. The devil is a liar. He brings all sorts of distractions in your way. Keep your eyes on Christ. The world hated him. The world will hate you too. It's a given. Be ready for it. Now, discipleship means living with other disciples, people who understand the journey and will love you for the changes that you're making and will love you for the decision that you've taken today. So today we're deciding to follow Jesus. No turning back. If you look at, if you look at, I hope cameras are on, look at all the faces here. This is your new family. This is the new household of God. So our Lord Jesus said in John 13, verse 34 to 35, that we should remain together. And he also said, I give you a new commandment. Let us love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Love means caring for one another and looking out for each other, calling when you remember to, and saying, I'm sorry when you hurt people. I'm sorry is just, is the best thing. Say it and mean it. In love, we understand that God is calling the sick and the broken sinner. Participant, facilitator, coordinator, all of us have our issues. Nobody, none of us are perfect. And we understand this. But when you're in the household of God, when somebody drops, you pick them up again. You reassure them, you hold them, and you keep on hopping to the finish line. So we must pray for each other regularly. Everyone can be saved, except he who knowingly chooses another way, like Judas. And even for those who seem to be sinning deliberately, we must remember to pray for them continuously. Now, even when the seminar ends, it is important to stay in touch with people, stay in touch with your facilitator, with your group members. Commit to attending the Tuesday Bible study. Join a society or a group in the church and participate. The devil brought pandemic, right? Every disappointment, that thing that the enemy plans for evil, it always turns to our good. During the pandemic, Alpha um develop some videos so you can run it online just like how we're doing the life in the spirit semin seminar nothing can thwart the work of god so join the alpha course run it at home with your family with your friends in your office join the charismatic renewal and be active in the ministry you know some of you might be like me thinking ah, these charismatics i don't know there's nothing there join you know, I'm a member of the ministry and I'm also a member of the renewal. And you know what it means to be in the household of God? During this pandemic, ministry meeting held, fellowship held, Bible study held. For the lectures, we did our spiritual talks. Um, we did rehearsals via Zoom. 
What this means is that you have a group of people journeying with you. The pandemic was a process, but we all were together supporting each other during a difficult time, okay? So remain in the household of God. Discipleship means living <clears throat> with other disciples. Okay. Hebrews, am I running out of time? Yeah. Hebrews 10. Yes. Okay, I'm round. Okay. Hebrews 10, verse 25 says, Let us give up meeting together. Let us not give up meeting together. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more, since you see that the day of the Lord is coming near. In this journey, your life may be altered out of control, but don't worry about it. Just stand firm. Now, discipleship means making others disciples. Remember Ezra 7, chapter 10? Ezra read the word, he practiced it, and he taught other people to do the same thing. That is what we are meant to do. We are meant to make other people disciples. It is a command, Matthew 28, verse 19. It is a command, okay? So today, um, the baton is being handed, us, handed over to, to us. I did a Life in the Spirit seminar. I went through a process. I'm speaking at the seminar to the glory of God. Um, so do you, desire, do you desire to be a disciple? We're going to be writing a letter to our Lord Jesus Christ, telling him what we want to do for him, not what he should do for us, what we want to do for him. And I'm sure during the announcements, they'll talk more about the letter. Okay? I will close now. And I will close with... One saying, I'm sorry, I like to watch football because my sons are soccer players. When we're watching the match analysis, one coach said to the, of the Chelsea team, he goes, they've taken a good decision. They know how to score goals. They're on the right side. With practice, perseverance, and patience, they will succeed. They will prevail. We have taken a good decision to be disciples of Jesus Christ. With practice, with perseverance, and with prayer, we too will succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. To God be all the glory. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for your daughter. We thank you for the word that proceeded out of her mouth. We thank you for making her your oracle today. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that all that we have heard this day shall permeate our hearts. And from today, we shall not only become your true disciples, but we will make others your disciple. Father, bless her, replenish her, fill her with your spirit, that she will continue to be your oracle. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, I want to uh, plead with us facilitators and uh, participants to wait for the announcements before you log off to your group. Please, just a few minutes. There are very important announcements that we'll take for this week. The first, we want to start with uh, what uh, speaker mentioned last, the letter of commitment. The letter of commitment, as he said it, is a letter that we'll be writing to Jesus next week. And that letter will only be read by Jesus, not anybody. That letter will be brought on the day of laying of hands for those that will be physical, if we have opportunity for the physical. And then for those, as we're having virtual seminar now, we will, with the permission of Monsignor, decide on what to do with the letters. Normally, previously, the letters are gathered and burnt by the priest himself. And then uh, we conclude seminar six. 
we are going to announce, make announcements around this more during the week and facilitators will convey what you need to do. But I just want to remind you or to inform you that this letter of commitment contains the things you want to do, the new way you want to serve God, those things you promise to do with him and for him. In the return, God will look at your heart and also do those things that you desire. So at the group sharings, the facilitators are going to tell you one or two things, but we have a whole week this week and next week to talk about it. We'll come to that. The next announcement is on what we have on Friday. We have the breaking of bonds or vigil. Now, I want you to know the time of the vigil. I know there are some people who actually don't want to stay late midnight. So the vigil starts from eight o'clock and ends by 12 on Friday. Friday, the 6th of November, we have breaking of bonds and it's by vigil. Just a prayer for everything that we, we had during our sharing, our personal contacts. We are now going to pray about them and God is going to relieve us of all those things. I want to make this particular uh, announcement. When we hear about breaking of bonds, people think that uh, if you have deliverance, then you are possessed. We are not possessed. So me, as I'm talking to you, I need deliverance. Uh, if I have a way of doing it every week, I will even do it. It's all prayers that God will shake off and remove everything that entangles us and that makes, us, makes it impossible for us to serve him the way we ought to serve him. And then to also remove anything that has been a hindrance around what we desire and what God has already, already released for us. So when we talk about deliverance, people should not say, oh, after all, I'm not possessed. I don't need it. It's all prayers. We're going to have three days preparation for it, starting from Wednesday to Friday. And uh, we are going to have prayers. We are also going to have Bible verses to read for those three days to prepare us. So there will be announcements through our facilitators and the platforms that we have. We will get those readings, we will get those prayers, and we'll prepare for Friday. We want to also tell us, those that have not done their uh, personal contact or counseling, those that had genuine reasons and communicated those reasons and agreed with their facilitators, please tomorrow you have a chance to conclude that. Of course, for you to have participated fully in this year's life in the Spirit Seminar, it means that you have followed all the seminars, you have also followed all the group sharings and participated actively in your group. It also means that you have done your, your personal contact or counseling, and that you are observing your quiet time very, very well. Please, as we go through the deliverance and as we go through the laying of hands, every seminar and every activity, you must have participated in all of them. Before you can say that you are, you have completed life in the spirit seminar fully, please don't omit anything, any of them, they are all important. We want to sound this notice because from next week now, from this week, end of this week, we are going to have or streamline the names of those who have gone through all this and then continue with them. Every other person, you can listen to the seminar the way you want, but those we are carrying on with, we want to know those who are actually going through all these uh, uh, activities, who will emerge really as having done their life in the spirit seminar for 2020. So please, we also want to remind uh, for those who did not go for confession yesterday, it is very important that you do that before attending the vigil of Friday. It is very, very important that you go for confession if you're a Catholic, wherever you are, 
if you are in Ukraine, you are in America, you are in Canada, wherever you are, please go for confession. Purposely for this life in the Swedish seminar. We know you've been doing that, but just go clean yourself up. And for those who are non-Catholics, we explained last week how you do your own, go to your closet the way you do, examine your life again, promise God you will not do that again, and ask for his grace to continue to live. Like uh, the speaker said, it is, it is possible. It is difficult to live a holy life or to become a saint, but it is possible. So by the grace of God, we have to achieve that. Now we have a session on Saturday, Spirit of the World, by four o'clock. So if you like, you can call it part of seminar five, but it's not seminar five because it's a different topic and you will enjoy it. You are also going to log in by four o'clock. You remember last week, we, we had seminar 3A by Saturday, and then we had seminar 3B. But this time around, this is not really seminar um, 5A, but it is a topic, spirit of the world. You will receive your, you will log in by four o'clock and we have that seminar. There won't be sharing as usual. There will not be sharing. Sharing will only be on Sunday. Please, you will receive the timetable because as we are going to, towards the close of this seminar, there are activities. I know we shared the timetable earlier, but we're going to share and distribute the timetable again so that people can look at, especially workers, people can look at uh, the timetable and try to keep certain dates open. Like Saturday now, you have to keep that day open so you can be part of that seminar, part of that discussion on, uh, on Saturday. So we're going to share the timetable through the facilitators and they will, they will help you plan. Please remember, remember to continue your quiet time. Remember to continue your quiet time and uh, share your experience. There is so much experience by individuals through a uh, quiet time. And remember to share your encounter with your facilitators. Please, facilitators, you will log in by 6.15 as usual for our closing prayer. Facilitators, you can now log out and go to your groups for your group sharing. Facilitators, please come back at 6.15 for our closing prayer. God bless you all. Thank you very much. The closing prayer should take place at your after your group sharing, please. Please log off now and go for your group sharing. Facilitators, pray your closing prayer with the group, your participants and your group and log back to the facilitators platform for our own closing prayer at 6.15.